So we've seen that um, the model can be reduced to a, a four by four system. So a system with four variables, four equations. Um, the four variables are output, employment, product market tightness, labor market tightness. And the four equations is that employment is both on the labor supply and labor demand curve, and output is both on the aggregate supply and aggregate demand curves. Um, so to get a bit of understanding about how uh, we're going to solve the model, and in particular, how labor market and product market interact with each other, um, let's try to have a, a graphical representation of the solution of the model. Um, and um, that will give us a little bit of clarity about what's happening, how markets interact with each other, and also what our solution uh, um, strategy is going to be. Um, so first thing we have to do is let's try to um, simplify the aggregate demand curve. So so far we have a behavioral aggregate demand curve that captures uh, how how people uh, want to spend. But what we can do is when we solve the model we can extract, uh, and, and this is kind of influenced by the aggregate supply because that determines household income. So let's try to clean out and substitute out income from the aggregate demand to get a pure aggregate demand curve. And that will allow us to have a clean graphical representation of the solution. Uh, so uh, let's move from the behavioral Eddy curve to pure Eddy curve. And, um, and we'll see that actually this step is quite important when we solve the model. Um, so we know that output is given by the aggregate demand, and we aggregate demand, we know that it's sigma x time um, income, but we know that the income of the household um, is just equal to um, the revenue of the firm because the income of the household is both their labor income plus profits so with the revenue of the firm and the revenue of the firm in turn is given by the aggregate supply so it's ys plus mu over p but we know also that um, when we solve the model output is also equal to ys uh, so thanks to that what we know is that uh, if we rewrite this equation, what we have is that this equation can be written as y is equal to sigma x. But when we solve the model output, um, the aggregate supply is just equal to output plus mu over p. And so therefore, once we reshuffle these things, we get that 1 minus sigma x y is equal to sigma x mu over p, and therefore we get that y is equal to sigma x 1 minus sigma x, where sigma x, again, this is our marginal propensity to spend, time mu over p, and so this, given the expression for sigma, uh, so sigma x, given that the expression for sigma x uh, we know that it's key epsilon 1 plus tau x 1 minus epsilon divided by 1 plus key epsilon 1 plus tau x 1 minus epsilon. Uh, and this in turn is a marginal propensity to spend. So from this we get that y is equal to key epsilon divided by um, 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1 times mu over p. Um, so this is, you know, once we combine supply and demand to uh, basically what we want is to substitute out aggregate supply uh, from the aggregate demand equation to get a pure aggregate demand, we get this condition. And so we define the pure aggregate demand as follow. And what's you know, nice is that this pure aggregate demand actually only depends on product market tightness. It doesn't depend anymore on um, labor market tightness. You know, YS um, depends on labor market tightness um, 
And so, but this one, this pure grid demand doesn't depend on labor market tightness anymore. It depends purely on, on the product market tightness, which will really simplify the analysis. So we define our pure aggregate demand as uh, yd of x is equal to t epsilon 1 plus tau x epsilon minus 1 u over p. And this is exactly the same as the pure aggregate demand uh, that we add in the basic model. Okay. Uh, and so once we have this, we can rewrite the solution of the model as follows. So we know that uh, yd of x and ys of x they have to be the same. We know that y is given, y has to be on the aggregate demand curve. We know that ld x theta has to be equal to ls of theta. And then we know that employment is on the labor um, supply curve. So here you can see, basically, what we can see is that um, once I have product market tightness, I can figure out immediately uh, output thanks to the aggregate demand, which doesn't depend on labor market tightness. Once I have labor market tightness, I can figure out employment directly thanks to the labor supply curve, which doesn't depend on um, product market tightness. And then what we can see is that uh, product market tightness and labor market tightness, so it's two variables, you have to satisfy two equations. One that uh, one equation is that aggregate supply and aggregate demand are equal, and aggregate supply involves both uh, product and labor market tightness, and two is that labor demand and labor supply are equal, and labor demand involves both product and labor market tightness. Um, so at some level, you can see that the interaction between the two markets comes from the labor supply, uh, from the labor demand and the aggregate supply. You know, firms are the, firms connect the labor market and the product market, and so the labor demand, which is how many workers firms to hire, and the aggregate supply, which is how many goods the firm is able to sell, they connect these two markets. You can see it here clearly. Uh, and so we can uh, represent that graphically. Uh, so we can have a graphical representation of the solution. We, we need two diagrams. We need one diagram for the labor market and we need one diagram for uh, the product market. So um, the product market diagram is going to look exactly like uh, what we had previously. So we can put product market tightness on the vertical axis. We can put output the horizontal axis, the maximum amount of output is K, the capacity, which is determined by what's going on on the labor market. Here I have zero. Um, and so here I put my pure aggregate demand curve. Uh, and so we know that the aggregate demand curve is zero when X is equal to XM, and then it's decreasing in x, uh, and so this is our pure aggregate demand curve, yd of x. And then we have uh, an aggregate supply curve. And here, you know, I, here we assume that everything that's going on on the labor market is fixed. And so the only thing that varies is the product market tightness. And so the aggregate supply is going to look something like this. This is ys of x and theta, but of course, uh, here I, I keep uh, I keep theta as given. So this is going to be increasing like this. And 
And so therefore, I can find y. Yeah, I can find x. Um, but of course, these are you know, given a certain um, theta that characterize the labor market tightness. And of course, you know, you also need to figure out what theta is to be able to draw this. But at the minimum, this is going to look like this. Um, and, and these have exactly the same shape as in the basic model, uh, because the uh, aggregate supply, you know, it's basically, since I take everything on the labor market as given, is f of x and k, where k is capacity, which will be determined by, uh, basically, this is determined by the labor, what's going on on the labor market. And the aggregate demand curves are the pure aggregate demand curves, so the ones that have, uh, the ones that I have here. Uh, so it's strictly decreasing in uh, in x. So this is one half of the um, solution. And then I have another half, which is what's going on in the labor market. And so on the labor market, I'll put this time the labor market tightness on the vertical axis, employment on the horizontal axis. The maximum employment is H, labor for participation, I have zero. Um, labor supply we know is an increasing function like this. This is LS of theta, and we know this is just F hat of theta times H. So it has the same properties as the aggregate supply. And then we have the aggregate demand. Oh, the labor demand. So the max tightness is theta m. This is LD of theta. It also depends on x, but here I take everything that's going on on the product market as fixed. Uh, and we know that it's strictly decreasing, the labor demand is strictly decreasing in the in theta from what we had seen earlier. It also um, depends on x, but here it is fixed. And then once we solve the model, we can read employment is going to be given at the intersection here, labor market tightness here. But of course, because labor demand here depends on x, and because k here, the aggregate supply depends on k, and therefore depends, uh, you know, k is basically a function of theta. Uh, and depends on theta. You know, I, co I can't solve the product market and the labor market independently. They are interrelated because the aggregate supply curves uh, depend on labor market tightness through K. And the labor demand curve depends on the product market uh, tightness uh, X. Um, so we'll have to, you know, figure out how to solve, uh, how, to, how to solve these four equations together uh, simultaneously. But the graphs are here just to show you uh, a bit the structure of what's going on in the two markets and also to show you that the product and labor market are connected through the labor demand because that depends on the two tightnesses and through the aggregate supply because that also depends on the two tightnesses. Um, but so now we have to take a bit more of an analytical approach like the graphical approach since we have all these diagram will you know help us understand what's happening but cannot really help us solving the model um, so now we have to move to something that's a bit more analytical here uh, once we've done uh, once we've done this well, here i should say so the labor market enters through the aggregate supply product market enters through the labor demand